I recently started working a job in Rwanda with a desk, colleagues and stuff. It has been a real eye-opening experience to work for someone again and having Rwandan colleagues who are young, very talented and solving some of Rwanda's biggest societal issues and challenges. In this video, I want to share with you five things you should know about working a professional job in Rwanda. From work benefits, colleagues and work culture. And at the end, I will share my tips on how you can get a job in Rwanda as well. All right, reka dutangire. Welcome in 2022, my wonderful peoples. I hope you are all doing well. If you made it this year, you are truly blessed. In 2022 is the year that I'm planning to get my finances right. As you all know, my biggest goal here in Rwanda is to start my own gym. Thus, I need money to fund this whole project. And the gyms have been hit severely hard because of the pandemic. So we are looking for different ways of making money. Hence this video. If you're new here, my name is Theo. I moved from the Netherlands to Rwanda in early 2019, I believe. For many reasons which I elaborated in this video, but the main one being to follow my dreams and open my own gym. I know it sounds corny, but it has been a lifelong dream since I was a kid, to be honest. However, I have recently started working a normal job with a desk and colleagues and stuff. For the longest time, people have been telling me that with my European education and experience, I could easily get a job in Rwanda. And I keep telling them, I did not come to Rwanda to get a job. I came to Rwanda to follow my passion, to open my gym for the first time in my life. That is, however, until COVID-19 hit and, and it started spreading like wildfire all over the world. As a consequence, the government here put some strict restriction on the whole gym sector. All gym had to close for well over a year. And after they opened, they were quickly closed again when the cases started to rise. At the moment of this recording though, gyms are allowed to open and operate. However, every attendee must take a COVID test before coming to the gym. As you can imagine, gym attendance and gym revenue have been reduced by more than 90%. So about a year ago, I was made aware about an opportunity to work at this tech company. So I had to reevaluate my answer to the question whether or not I should work here in Rwanda. I had enough money to live on for a few months, but really not enough to grow my business. So I did it. I got myself a serious professional J-O-B as a content creator consultant at this big tech company called Irembo. If you've ever been to Rwanda, you know the company. And a few months later, I got myself a second job as a media marketing and communication expert. This job looked more challenging, but it had also more responsibility and better pay. So it has been a few months now, and now that I'm working this job, I realize it's actually not that bad to work a job. It's pretty good, actually. And that is why I'm making this video. For people who are interested in working a job in Rwanda, here are five things that I have learned that you should know if you want to work a job here in Rwanda. So, number one, salary. See, the salary is pretty much negotiable. It's very, it's a normal thing here in Rwanda to negotiate the prices of fruits and vegetables. I've realized this applies also for salaries, especially if you have a unique skill or job experience that you are bringing to the Rwandan labor market. And the salaries are quite competitive, especially if you don't compare them to the European or American salaries, of course. For example, you can live a very comfortable life here in Rwanda with a salary of about $1,000 after taxes. Whereas you need probably like 3,000 euros to live the equal amount of comfortable life in Europe or about $4,000 in America. Also, you can also get paid in foreign currencies if you're working for a foreign company. This is particularly handy because I've realized that the Rwandan franc has a higher inflation rate than the dollar or the euro. Number two, time is somewhat flexible. Yep, I thought when I would be working in a professional environment, this will not be the case, but it is. The hours that people start working are very vague. Sometimes they start at 8 or 9 or even 10. This is great for me because I normally have my gym business, which I start working at 6 a.m. So by the time it is 9, I've usually worked 
three hours consistently. Also, people tend to be late for meetings. Not a lot, not ridiculously late, but still, it is rare to have a physical meeting start exactly on time. Virtual meetings, however, they do start on time. Number three, work benefits. Professional jobs here do come with tremendous work benefits. They do vary a lot. A lot. From retirement account, 13 month salary, or expenses that are paid for traveling or equipping your home office. Because I'm not fully employed, I don't get all the benefits, but I did read about them and they did seriously make me consider getting a full-time position. Number four, everyone speaks at least two plus languages. In most professional jobs here, everyone speaks at least two languages. This is great if you are a foreigner working here in Rwanda, you feel right at home. Especially at my tech job, there are many cultures, many talents from different African countries. It's great to witness that and to be part of it. And number five, this is the biggest one and the one that surprised me the most. There are quite a lot of job openings out there. Now that I'm working a job, maybe because I'm behind the scenes, I keep seeing many job posts that keep popping up left and right. I've come to learn that basically every company is always looking for fresh new talent. And there are many people who are doing job hopping from senior positions, also from entry positions. So no one stays at one position for a very long time. The problem is of course that when these jobs become available, they are not easily published outside of the company. So you have to be in the company to be the first one to be aware of these job openings. And usually you already have some kind of job. This is not uniquely to Rwandan, I've been, I've been told, but it is great to know that if you're looking for a job, there are more job openings out there than you realize. So keep trying. Now, you might be wondering, how can I get a job in Rwanda? To be honest, I'm still quite new about this and I don't have enough knowledge to give you the right tools to where to get these jobs. But I can tell you though how I got my two jobs here in Rwanda and maybe it might help you in getting your job. I got my first job about a year ago when the pandemic was in the middle, of course, and the gyms were all closed. I was made aware about this job opening at this tech company called Irembo, as I said. How you might wonder? Well, through my YouTube content. Apparently, one of the recruiters got wind of my content on YouTube and checked out some of my other social media platforms like LinkedIn and got in contact with me through a mutual friend. The job opening that he was offering was not full time, but the salary did seem okay for random standards and also for the work that I'll be putting in into this job. I do not know if I'm allowed to share the exact amount that I'm getting because according to my contract, I can only discuss the content of this contract with written permission. I did not have time to go that route. But all I can say though, it is quite above average. If you've seen my other video where I discussed how much randoms make, well, this salary is above average. So you do the math. I did not negotiate a lot because this looked like an exciting job at an exciting company and it came at the right time because the gym was closed at that time so I had plenty of time left over during the day. For my second job, I got approached by this French Moroccan guy who, who just moved to Rwanda and was working on a project of setting up the e-commerce sector here in Rwanda. He saw some of my videos when he was doing his research about Rwanda and got in contact with me. He educated me a bit about the project and it looked very interesting. So I, I stuck around and did help with a little bit of free content creation. I was originally planning on making a big YouTube video about it once it launched. But then a job position did come available as a media marketing and communication expert. So I applied and I got it. Now I can create even more content. That's what I thought at least. But I've been so busy working in, in that uh, place that I did not have enough time for YouTube to be honest. But this year it might change. What I like about this project is that it is more like a startup and it is funded by the Rwandan government and by the big company called GIZ. You might have heard of it. They pay very well, but it has more responsibility and more challenges. And I get to lead the small team of content creators as well there. So it is very exciting job for me right now. In conclusion, I got both my jobs through my social media presence. And this is definitely also what I would advise anyone who wants to get a job here in Rwanda. 
You don't have to have a YouTube video like me, but you can at least update your LinkedIn profile and content once a month or so. Or update your, your Twitter and Instagram handles more often. You see, if you're not on the internet, you are not existing in most people's eyes. That is my experience at least. Now, you might be wondering why an entrepreneur like me, who vowed to work for himself to get the freedom to work whenever I wanted or wherever I wanted, is now applying for a job to work for someone else? Well, personally, I have four key important reasons why. Number one has to do with time. You see, my biggest priority and my first love here in Rwanda is my gym business. But this job, both of them are not full time and uh, they allow me to have time to keep working on my other businesses on the side, such as personal training, YouTube and my online consultancies. Number two is money. This is the big reason, of course, for everyone to get a job, right? So for me, because my gym businesses are slowed down through the restrictions and everything, I had plenty of time over. So and this is a great way to kind of keep earning money to fuel my business. Number three is also connections. You see, Rwanda is very small and everyone is kind of interconnected. But as an entrepreneur, I rarely get the time to meet people who are outside my sector. With these new jobs, I've been able to meet some people who, are, who don't normally cross my path, like software engineers, people who just come from abroad, or different type of people. And I believe that connections are needed for myself and for my business to grow to the next level. And lastly, the biggest one personally is the challenge. I like to challenge myself in the gym as well as outside the gym. So working two part-time jobs and keeping up my business is the biggest challenge of my life so far. And I like to think that I can do it. I love learning new skills, leading people, solving problems, and I get to contribute to Rwanda's development from a different angle. The consequence is though that I do have less freedom and less time overall. I'm working 12 to 14 hour day shifts nowadays and I don't have enough time to work on my YouTube or my podcast regularly. But I'm getting there. If you're interested in getting a job in Rwanda, link up with me on LinkedIn. And I will try to post some of the job openings that I can find right now below in the description of this video. If you have any questions, post them in the comment section below or connect with me on one of my social medias. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Come check me out on TikTok as well. And I'd like to see you in the next video. Ramuche.